It's time to do some overclocking, baby. Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. That's right, it's time for another overclocking video, and this time I'm going to be showing you guys how to overclock the Ryzen 9 5950X and the Ryzen 9 5900X on a Asus B550 motherboard. Now, this tutorial, while it is targeted towards those two CPUs, is largely going to be applicable to all the Ryzen 5000 series CPUs to an extent, as well as all the Asus boards. They should be all very, very similar. There's going to be a little bit of differences on like how high you can clock them and etc., but it, roughly it should be all the same, so no matter what your CPU you're using uh, this will probably be at least a little bit helpful but before we get into that first I got to give you guys a disclaimer uh, just because we got to go ahead and do that so the disclaimer is any and all overclocking not only voids your warranty but also has the possibility to degrade or even destroy your hardware this video is simply a demonstration of the settings which worked for my setup and may not necessarily work for you I will not be held accountable for any damages that occur proceed at your own risk. And there's one more thing we gotta go over real quick before we get into the video, and that's the programs you're gonna need. So I highly, highly recommend that you guys download Hardware Info. You're gonna be using that uh, to check the settings on your processor. The next other programs you're gonna need are Cinebench R23 and 8064. We are gonna be using those two programs to stress test your CPU. Hey, if you're one of those people who wants to use Prime95, be my guest personally. Uh, I found that to be, I just don't really stress my CPU that hard that I really need to use Prime 95. But again, you want to use it, go ahead. So with all that stuff out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and meet you guys in the BIOS and then we'll get right into overclocking. Let's just get right into this one, boys. Yes. All right. So while you're restarting, you're going to see this splash screen pop up, which tells you to hit delete or F2 to enter the BIOS. Go ahead and hit delete. And if you've never been in the BIOS before, you're actually going to be faced with this screen. Go ahead and hit F7 to enter advanced mode. Now, once you're into advanced mode tab over to AI Tweaker. This is where we're going to be doing all of our overclocking. And the first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and enable DOCP. It's kind of like Intel's XMP and it allows your memory to actually run at its rated speed instead of the default 2133 megahertz. And this may actually even be a bigger boost in terms of performance uh, than actually doing overclocking on your CPU. So this is very important for you to enable. Then go ahead and hit F10. And then once you're here, you're going to actually see that yes, all the settings have been saved and hit OK to reset and then I'll meet you right back into the BIOS. All right, so now that you've gone ahead and enabled DOCP, the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is actually do an all-core overclock, as I believe most people, when they think of overclocking, this is what they think of. So I'm going to go ahead and type in 45, uh, which is going to be 4.5 gigahertz, as I believe all these Ryzen 5000 series processors should be capable of hitting 4.5 gigahertz on their all-core. Uh, then we need to go ahead and go over to this setting here and change it to manual, as we're going to be punching in a manual voltage. And, you know, typically I found somewhere between 1.2 to 1.3 volts to work pretty well for me. If I push beyond 1.3 volts, it actually starts to get just way too hot on a lot of these processors. Uh, so I'm going to go for a neutral uh, roughly 1.26 volts. And of course, uh, you go ahead and punch in whatever voltage you're comfortable with. This is just what worked out for me. So here we go, 1.26 volts. And then the next thing we're going to have to do is go ahead and go over to the Digi plus VRM, and this is a very important step here. And so open this up, and then we're going to actually change the load line calibration to level four. I found this to give you a decent amount of V-droop while it not being too much. And it's very important that you actually enable that. And then we're going to go ahead and make sure that all this PBO settings, all of them are disabled as if you have had PBO enabled in the past, you're going to want to make sure all that stuff's disabled. All right, so once we got all that stuff done, we're just going to go ahead and hit F10 to reset here. Uh, we can see here, yes, everything looks good. And then we're going to go ahead and hit OK, and I'll meet you guys in Windows. All right, so here we are in Windows, and the first thing I'm going to do is open up Hardware Info, hit Yes, and then hit Sensors Only and Run. Uh, once you open that up, we're going to go ahead and take a look to make sure all the voltages and clock speeds are right here. It does look right so far. Uh, if we scroll down here, we can see, yep, 4.5 gigahertz across all cores. And we're going to scroll all the way down here uh, until you find something called the uh, CPU, at least called Voltage SVI2 TFN. This is something you're going to want to keep an eye on uh, when you're actually stress testing to make sure it's actually drooping the voltage a little bit, but not too much. Now we're going to go ahead and open up Cinebench R23. And yep, here we go. Open that thing up. And we're going to do a quick multi-core test to make sure that this is stable. So go ahead and open that thing up. 
go ahead and hit start on the multi-core thing here and then keep an eye on not only the voltages but also the temperatures we can see here yep the voltages have started to droop just a little bit which is just absolutely fine we can also see here uh, that the uh, CPU temperature is starting to raise and you know personally uh, you know as long as it's under 90 degrees Celsius that's uh, gonna be fine for running uh, personally I would like to get it under 80 degrees Celsius under full load that's actually a ideal temperature uh, the lower you can get it the better uh, just as long as you're not exceeding 90 C all right and it looks like we finished here and we got actually a really great score here almost as fast as a 32 core Ryzen Threadripper 2990 WX on this 5950X so that's a pretty good score here and you know once you do get a uh, completed score if you run this a few times and it's working just fine uh, you can go ahead and increase your overclock if you want to so we start out at 4.5 gigahertz maybe try 4.6 gigahertz at the exact same voltage and if that works for you, you can push it even higher and eventually you're going to see it start to crash and when that happens uh, you have two options you can either a uh, reduce your clock speed and keep that same voltage or b you can increase the voltage if you have the temperature headroom but keep in mind i'm actually on a custom loop here on a 420 millimeter radiator uh, so it kind of depends on what your cooling is like now i'm going to go ahead and open up a to 64 extreme we're going to go ahead and go into the tools the uh, actual system stability test here make sure that stress cpu fpu and cache are enabled and then you'll hit start on that in the same deal here uh, just make sure that's stable run it for at least 10 to 30 minutes and if you're able to pass with no errors whatsoever well then great that means that you can continue to overclock it further if you want to same thing as before uh, continue to overclock it higher and higher until you eventually start to see errors or crashing again once that happens you can either increase your voltage or decrease your clock speed but with that out of the way now let's go ahead and talk about the second way you can overclock your Ryzen 5000 series processor and that's with PBO so let's go ahead and jump back into the BIOS and I'll explain the best settings to do to enable PBO and I think this is actually a better option for a lot of people who are maybe beginners into overclocking and honestly PBO is kind of like auto overclocking and these days it does a really good job so yeah let's go ahead and get into that BIOS and we'll go ahead and enable those settings all right so here we are back into the BIOS go back over to AI tweaker we're going to go ahead and go down to the CPU core ratio turn that back to auto uh, we're pretty much turning everything back to audio auto uh, go to the CPU voltage again back to auto digi plus VRMs is very important turn that back to auto you do not want to have that on level four you want it on auto or that could be potentially a problem I don't know so yeah make sure that's on auto then go back over to the precision boost overdrive change it to enabled, change the max CPU boost clock override to 300. I found that this works the best for me. Entering a higher number just doesn't really do anything, but entering a lower number may actually give you a smaller boost clock. So yeah, go ahead and enter that in, then go ahead and go back and then you can just hit F10 from here make sure that everything looks correct to you. And then you can just hit okay and there you go. Boom, you got auto overclocking enabled and I'll meet you back in Windows. All right, so here we are back in Windows again. Once again, open up hardware info. Yes, sensors only run. Uh, once you got that open, you're gonna notice something's a little bit different here. The voltages are a lot higher, that's totally okay. But another thing's a little bit different here. Uh, you can actually see that the clock speeds, the maximum clock speeds are much, much higher. So instead of 4.5 gigahertz or maybe 4.6 gigahertz that you were able to achieve, or maybe even 4.7, you're seeing 4,825 megahertz. Uh, yeah, you'll even end up seeing over 4.9 or even uh, over 5 gigahertz if you let it run for long enough. We can see here over 4.95 gigahertz already just on a single core. Uh, so this could potentially allow you to get slightly better single thread performance. Go ahead and open up uh, Cinebench R23 again. I'm just going to go ahead and show you uh, how good PBO is. And this is why I like PBO a lot because for beginners, it gets you so close to the manual overclock that honestly, I think this is a better approach for a lot of novice users. So go ahead and run this. And you can see here, uh, we're actually getting nearly 4.5 gigahertz across all cores already, which is really, really good. And if we scroll down to the temperatures, take a look at that. The temperatures are a little bit higher as it's getting a little bit more aggressive with those voltages, it appears. Um, but yeah, overall, it's just automatically getting really, really close to that 4.5 gigahertz right out of the box just by entering those few settings into PBO. We can see here the score is very similar as well. So yeah, I really like that, especially on the 5950X. I think it works really well. And then uh, another thing you'll notice is that the single core score is probably also going to be a little bit higher. All right, so yeah, overall, my conclusion is if you do have like a Ryzen 9 5950X, you'll probably be better suited just going ahead and going into your BIOS and enabling PBO. 
CBO as it's going to do a pretty good job. If you have like a Ryzen 9 5900X or lower, you may actually get a better outcome from doing an all core overclock. But again, it's going to take a little bit more work, so it might not necessarily be worth it for you just to get a little bit extra multi core performance. I've just noticed that on the higher end uh, CPUs such as the 5900X and especially on the 5950X with all those cores running, it gets harder and harder to get that all core overclock as high as you need it to be to also match the same single threaded performance while giving you a multi-core performance increase. So with the CPU like the 5950X, you may actually be able to get a boost out of the multi-core performance by doing an all core overclock, but you might actually end up losing uh, some of that single threaded performance. Uh, with my 5900X that I was using, I actually was able to get the same exact single threaded performance with a 4.7 gigahertz all core overclock, and I was able to get an extra 10% out of the multi-core. So ultimately, it kind of just depends on your chip and you can further optimize it by overclocking like half the cores on your chip a little bit higher than the other half uh, but for most people I would say that PBO does such a good job that it's probably just going to be better off for you to enable PBO change those couple settings that I showed you and then just not have to really ever worry about it again. But hey that's just what I think. Do you like PBO overclocking more or do you like that good old fashioned all core overclock? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and of course I'll see you guys in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.